Hello. It's been a long time. Um, I thought I'd make a short video, hopefully not too long, uh, about a very basic idea, shape. Um, shape is something that a lot of players talk about. Um, it's kind of an idea that come from, comes from Japan, because if you look at the literature, uh, Go literature from Korea and China, they use slightly different words, like Korean uh, use hangma, and I don't actually know what you say in Chinese, but they, the ideas are a little different. I feel like the way it's translated from Japanese, <clears throat> especially as someone who learned Go in the West and whose main, you know, second language is Japanese, so I mostly read Japanese books, um, the idea of shape sometimes gets a little jumbled. Um, what I'm going to present here is a little bit about traditional shape but also like my own way of explaining uh, kind of the nuance of shape because I feel like in the West uh, a lot of how we look at shape is like this is good shape this is bad shape oh that ended up being good shape that ended up being bad shape <laughs> it's like okay but as a new player maybe that doesn't you know you're kind of like why is this good shape or why is it that looks really ugly to me or that looks you know really great for me and it's not either way and even as a strong player, um, if you're looking to improve, <clears throat> I know a lot of, um, like, you know, one Don players, maybe, yeah, even up to, like, four Don, really, um, have struggle with making, like, shape in the center of the board because uh, they're not patterns that we know intuitively, necessarily. Um, and they're also shapes that, uh, they're always unique to the board, right? So they're not things you can just learn <clears throat> by themselves anyway. So I'm going to kind of make a little distinction here between um, what is called, I want to term static shape and dynamic shape. So static shape is like the things you've probably seen many times, like this is the horse's head, um, this is the table shape, this is the socket bottle or uh, dog's face. You know, these are like shapes that you can just recognize, you know, bamboo joint. These are very common in the West. Um, tiger's mouth, yeah. Um, and so we have like a lot of names for these things, and they happen all the time. So you're like, oh, you know, these are all good shapes. They have good names. And then they have bad shapes, like the empty triangle, the B2 bomber, like these kind of things. <clears throat> but then you, when you really think about it, um, there are a lot of joseki. I prepared some examples, but I, I figure I'll talk about this a little. That end up making bad shape. Like this was one of, uh, Li Cheng Ho's favorite, uh, Joseki says black, and you notice, oh, you know, black's not really that great a shape. Like you have this empty triangle here. Um, the corner is pretty open. There's a weak point uh, here and at the three. Excuse me, at the three three. So shapes are not always good and they're not always bad. And it depends on what they're doing. So instead of directly talking the good and bad shape. I'm going to start by talking about the function of shape. Why do we make shape? Because obviously, like, as we play a game, um, shapes are just going to happen, right? Like, we want our stones to be coordinated, so they're going to have shapes if they get close to close enough together. <clears throat> so then, well, yeah, what do we want to do with these shapes? And it comes down basically to life and death and to um, the strength of stones. So, like, if... I'm going to talk about something really basic and uh, that you may or may not have heard before and then come back to shape. It's a small digression. So like oftentimes when I'm teaching um, even strong players like Wandan and above, awesome, you know, when I'm first getting to know them, like, so why do you think we start in the corners? And they'll often say like, it's easier to surround territory there, right? It takes less stones. That's like something people have been taught many, many times, like it takes, you know, Six stones, surround nine points. Surround nine points in the center takes, you know, 12 stones. And on the side, it takes, uh, oh, sorry, six stones in the corner, nine on the side, 12 in the center, right? Ratio of two to three to four, because the number of sides you need. But then you wonder, okay, like, why do we play on the four, four point if the corner can be taken? You know, that's not good for territory. Or why do so many Josaki, you know, like, you play here, I play here, and then like, why doesn't, I mean, it's very popular to play this one, 
but then why do we like sometimes play here? Because aren't we giving away some of the corner that we, you know, wanted? Um, of course, this is kind of old Joseki, but you know, get the idea. It's actually not really about points. Uh, a lot of Go is not actually about territory. I think that's really uh, misrepresented, to be honest. Like territory matters. Um, I guess that's a topic for another video, to be honest. I'm just gonna say we actually start in the corners because we can surround more space there initially, which sounds like taking territory. But there's a difference. <clears throat> because generally to be strong, to have a strong stone, to have a strong, strong group, you need one of two things. You either need a shape, which you can't get in one move, right? Because shapes need more than one stone. Or you need I space. And I space, you know, if I have a group that's like this, uh, let's just make it really simple, like this thing. I don't care what you do to this. Like, as long as you don't cut it, this is not dying. It's like, you can't, you can play here and play here. Okay. Like, or I could just complete the shape, right? Like, if this thing's totally surrounded, you still cannot kill it. There's no way for you to kill it. It covers too much space because anywhere you play inside, I can subdivide it into two, you know, eyes. <clears throat> so playing in the corners initially is kind of similar. Playing the star point, obviously you could take the 3-3, and we've seen this with AlphaGo <coughs> um, recently. Sorry. Um, taking away the corner kind of actually makes the corner very vulnerable if you play this way, because later on, why might I play here, and then there's the peep, and then you have some bad shape, right? Because the stick... It doesn't have space, and it also doesn't have very good eye shape. Like, it's very hard to make eyes in an efficient way. Right? Like, you can make eyes like this. Like, oh, I made an eye. Oh, I made... Almost, almost made my eye. Okay, there we go. There's my two eyes. And that really is painful, especially because I could push here and take Sentai, because, you know, you're still alive. You can't kill this thing. Actually, you don't even need to answer that. So, yeah, so basically, we've started to see this with AlphaGo, where I like, take the corner, but then that black chooses other Joseki, right? You, you can choose this one, which is popular, or you can just extend. <clears throat> and actually, this shape, you might be like, well, this is, you know, black has three stones, but we see AlphaGo leave it all the time. It's actually very hard to attack. Like, your normal attacking moves, right, would be, like, the pincer. But actually, you can make very easy shape with, like, double Hane on top or this kind of clamping thing, and then push, or jump. Like, there's lots of ways to make shape, or just pincer. Like, there's lots of ways to make shape, actually. It's kind of hard to attack sometimes. Mm, sorry about that. I think I had a lot of spam calls. So anyway, the point is, we generally play in the corners to make strong groups. <sighs> I hate, like, I'm on a no-call list, but I get a million calls from these people. It's really annoying. Anyway, um, sorry about that. So we, yeah. So the point is, you generally the point is to make shape. To is to be strong. You need either I space or I shape. So there's kind of this contention between covering a lot of space and making your own shape. If you either can't cover a lot of space or don't want to cover a lot of space to play somewhere else, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit because there's a little bit of a relation here. Um, between, oh, let me let me give get to another example first. This one. So about a so this Joseki is very common. Um, it's becoming a little less common, but it's still pretty common. Uh, and you know, black is very strong in the corner. Took lots of ice space and territory. And white also with this extension covers a lot of space. Uh, and so like this group's pretty strong, pretty alive. Though it has some weak points, it's you know not going to die. But we saw about a year ago with AlphaGo when he played Lisa Dahl, um, AlphaGo would Teneki this shape. Because actually, compared to playing this move, the Tiger's Mouth offers a little bit more eye, eye shape potential. And we also saw this move as a as just instinct. <laughs> um, but so like in here, we often see like White could just jump. Or White would make this peep and then jump. And it's actually quite a um, robust shape. It's not super strong, but it's actually really hard to attack, and it's pretty difficult to like harass it further. So there's a trade-off here. White gets to cover another area of the board, 
with the Teneki, but White still preserves a decent amount of eye shape. Um, specifically, this peep helps a lot. And I'll get to come back to why that's the case, why this peep matters a lot. And actually, when we see um, Lisa Dole play AlphaGo, I think in one of the games, I don't remember which, <coughs> he would uh, he changed it up to play here in one of the games. And that's because if White Teneki is now, it's much harder to make shape. Like if you can come here, but you know, this is still not an eye and this thing can still be harassed. It's like not super severe, but it only has one eye and it's, you know, black's actually gaining quite a bit of profit. So by playing this one, um, you remove that peep from white and you can't go as far because now you can get cut, right? It's like a little bit more difficult. Um, so that's a kind of a key point to think about is the difference between shape and space. And there's actually, a, I'm, the next example I'm going to show you builds on that. It, the, between shape and space, there's this idea of liberties, you know, very simple, you know, a stone has four liberties, has six liberties, eight liberties, right? Um, in case you are new to go, I guess I should say, a liberty is any of the points that are directly next to the stone that if you take them all, then the stone gets captured, taken off the board. Um, so when we're making shape, part of what we're trying to do is actually limit the liberties of any stone that comes into our space. So if I were to show you this example again, uh, with the pincer, wrong order, but you get the idea. Uh, and actually, let's give, wait, the, not that one, the peep. So now, um, if black comes in, like pokes this eye, right? This stone actually, uh, at the, even though it has four liberties now, it actually does not really have a lot of uh, room to maneuver because of the peep here, right? Because of this exchange. And so because of that, when white pushes up, this stone is really short on liberties. Like it only lost one, but it actually can't move very far. Like it would have to play here, right? And if it plays there, you can just push, you can play here, right? And while black has basically been forced to connect on Dame, which means like zero point, it's a little more than zero point because you capture the stone, but it's basically very little. White has reinforced uh, her shape to become very strong. So that's kind of the idea, is since the idea of shape, like as opposed to covering eye space, you want to basically be able to make eyes, but it's actually very hard to make eyes. So instead we make, we cover some spaces that if your opponent tries to come into, then you can squeeze out their liberties to gain more benefit on the outside. And the outside is always better, unless like you're totally surrounded, the outside is always better because it's facing a more open area. You have more room to go to and you can continue to develop to the rest of the board, right? So like in this example, black comes in to take away your space and white's now facing the outside of the board over here, and even over here a little bit. Where black stones, they haven't really gotten anything. They captured one stone, maybe two, and that's it. Right, and white's shape is still pretty robust. It, you basically have an eye here in 90% of cases. So that's kind of the idea. It's like you want someone so that when they come in, it becomes very hard <coughs> um, for them to save that stone, right? So the next example I want to show you is this. Um, and this is going to be a very clear distinction about how shapes change partially depending on the circumstances and also depending on the space. <clears throat> so if you ask any relatively strong player, probably even not a very strong player, <laughs> um, this shape has a vital point. Where is the vital point? Right here. And the reason for this is like if black plays here, uh, white's actually in a pickle because let's say white doesn't do anything when then black can come into this more severe vital point right and basically can cut no matter what you do and yeah there's some tricks here that you could try but black has the whole board to move to so there's not really any issue right like white is cut there's this cross cut so white's two groups are split and this situation is really bad for white um yeah, so this is kind of the vital point of the shape. You might see some people they are like, oh, well, this is the real vital point. And it's true. This is the it's a double peep, which is very severe. But you can't really do anything with it. It's very hard to do anything with it immediately. For instance, 
well, I can squeeze your liberties like this, right? You have you want to save these stones, but now you're making a dumpling, and on any other board there'd be a ladder here, or some other way to make shape, right? Double hana maybe. Like this actually is really difficult for black. Of course, you know having a million stones on the outside is nice, but you can see like giving even giving up these stones, <laughs> white would be able to like basically be alive. And considering the whole board is surrounded, that's pretty good. Um, and you get the idea. Black comes in too early, and you can squeeze. Right? That's pretty simple. So that's why usually for this shape, the vital point is here. Um, so that your follow-up is this peep. Right? You actually see this. I'm going to make a new board. But you actually see this shape quite a bit in this kind of thing. Um, I have to think about it for a second. So like, you might have a shape like this. This is not the most... <laughs> accurate diagram, but this is also a vital point of this shape, this corner, because if black plays elsewhere, you can play here. Obviously, this would be a little over-concentrated if you're a stronger player, but maybe some similar circumstance. You set up to play this forcing exchange and then peep, and if black blocks, you can just push and cut, and this bottom group is not alive yet. And you have cut off this outside stones and almost sente. It could be a co if black doesn't add this move. Um, you could attack it, or in this case, white strong on both sides. You could just leave it. It's around in a large scale. Yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously white black can connect here, but the result's similar, right? You have a probably you could kill this, <laughs> but I'm just gonna make it live. Right, you could kill it by descending here. Uh, actually, that doesn't quite kill. It would depend a lot on the uh, surrounding on the left. <clears throat> but you get the idea. It sets up for the vital point. See, it's one space removed. Like, you're setting up to split. Now, let's return to that other example for a second. The, uh, this one. Oh, why does it have all the other stones there? Sorry. I didn't know it did that. Did that. So anyway, <laughs> the vital point is to play here. And you can kind of see that now. It sets up to split white. So like, as white, you're not going to play here. This feels really terrible, because <laughs> black is still on a vital point, taking away the eye of this, you know, potential eye here. Um, so normally what you would do is, like, you would try to sacrifice. You would try to attach to limit black's liberty still. And maybe if black backs up, you can, uh, not there, bump to make a table shape. And you can uh, see that you're starting to develop a little bit over here. Um, but at the same time, you know, black has other maneuvers. And it depends exactly how strong black is. Like, in this case, black could just cut, bump, and basically play anything because all the ladders work for black. So then you'd be in trouble. Um, I'm going to switch to another position, which should look... Oh, did I do this in the main? That's why. <laughs> it's in the main branch. So then these things are all there. Okay. Sorry about that. So, if we go to this example. This is actually the same shape we just saw before, with uh, this turning shape, and the stone taking away its vital point. But actually, there's a big difference here. The first thing is, obviously, the board is not surrounded by black stones. The second thing is, it's actually against the side of the board, which makes a big difference. For instance, if white just tries a cut here, right, we're going to cut black, this doesn't actually work out very well for white, because black can, well, two options, easier, let's just say it's very easy. Black can extend here, threatening a ladder, and then attach. And you notice that this is still taking advantage of white's liberties. We're still basically trying to force white, uh, squeeze white against our stones here to make shape. And so if you know this test strategy, it's pretty easy. White can't really play anything. Like, there's a really strong resistance here uh, that I won't go into, but it's basically the same. <laughs> um, the test strategy is obviously if white Han is, you can cut. Now, no matter what white does, uh, white is short on liberties. White can't connect, so you would capture. And similarly here, you can tie this way and capture. If white connects, you just take. Um, there's not really any other variation. Like, white can go here, but there's a ladder. Yeah, the strongest resistance is probably this one, but 
you can this one will depend a little bit on the surrounding but even if black descends um there's not really a great move for white like you can play here and i don't know where white goes next to be honest <laughs> like you could do this and maybe white will kill your stones you know white will push all the way down i'm not even reading it but maybe white will push all the way down and kill this Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're mostly dead. There's a little bit of room for stuff here, but let's let's just say it's dead. White took these stones, right? You forced white to take those stones by shorting the liberties. But you cut off the corner, and this is like an insane amount of free moves, right? <laughs> like this is an insane amount of moves here that you got for you know ten points or fifteen points. Um. So yeah, so you notice there's a really big difference here, mainly that in our other variation, uh, when white, you know, white can't descend here, right? In the other variation in the center, white could just run away forever to the side. But obviously this one doesn't work because white is again short on liberties. So the shape depends a lot on how much space you have around it, as well as just the literal shape. So we can't really just rely on knowing a shape by itself although like you have to know the shape first and then you have to think about it like does that work here if he tries to take away this eye will i be able to you know save protect myself if not right so it's a very common strategy for white to play here because then that threatens this cut again there's no more attachment to shorten the liberties or we'll see white play here because it's a little bit more efficient for the corner but then we'll see black has a strategy of his own which is to play here a probe because um, you can play this one and you fix your shape a little bit you have a table shape a little bit stronger shape white well, can't um hana here anymore obviously you just eat it um if white goes down you can make this shape which is the same thing and sometimes we'll notice like maybe white doesn't have that exact shape maybe it's something like this and this is still um problematic because that one variation i didn't go into uh, with this one, right? Um, oh, I made an exchange first. It doesn't really matter. Now this is a little bit harder because white can easily link up, right? You don't have like this forcing move anymore. So what the? So now this is a more of a situation where this vital point is more effective. Um, so often you'll see black play a move like this, um, which is a similar idea. You can sacrifice some stones. Again, you're basically just limiting liberties to fix your shape. Or white could go this way, in which case you can leave it, um, or you could bump. And in some cases, it depends, you can play here. It depends because sometimes it's worthwhile for white to still make this cut. But it depends. Um, so yeah, so the main takeaway here is like even the same shape could be weak or strong depending on the circumstances. And it has to do with this relationship between space and uh, liberties and how or sorry space and shape and liberties are like kind of like interplay between those two ideas or those two uh ways of thinking um so i have another example here uh sorry not this one and not that one <laughs> and not that one i don't know what this is uh, i think these got messed up by my other tree. Okay, well, I thought I had one more example. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll just make it really quickly, sorry. Um, so it's like this. Because the, th the main, the other idea I want to show you is that shape is uh, dynamic. It doesn't, so we've s seen that shapes can change depending on where they are on the board, right? They can also sh change in time, right? So um, one way to attack this group is to play this nice move. Or you could play the jump, and they have different properties. Like obviously, this knight's move puts more pressure on white. And that we're, um, I'm gonna. This is maybe less shape, but more about making making shape, I guess. But I just want to show you a little bit um, of an idea. So the idea here is basically, if white attaches, and black extends, this is a little bit of a slack answer by black. It's not really bad because obviously you're maintaining strength and still growing on this area here but this stone this exchange 
has given white a little bit more space to work with, right? That's kind of important. Um, oh, I thought of another example, but I'll come back to it. Um, and there's also another benefit to this exchange. It doesn't actually matter here because it's going to be the same regardless of whether black hog is or not. But I just want you to think about if black backs up, you've gained a little bit more space here to make shape. And we can look at the Hana too. Like this is more severe, right? Because you're taking away the liberty. Well, now white can attach here. And we got we want to compare this. If white attaches initially, right? Black's gonna back off, white comes here, and black is a lot stronger in this area. And now black and hana, and you basically have to pull back. Um, and you're you're alive, you're alive as white. But if we look at what white has gained, like in terms of points, you've gained, you know, three points. Your group's alive, that's great. But this strength on the outside is really beneficial to black. From a strategic standpoint, you always want to be like, you know, taking the outside, um, kind of like how you make good shape. If they come in, you squeeze them and take the outside. So this is similar. You're squeezing white to take the outside. However, uh, by changing the order, white can actually make good shape here by attaching after making this exchange. And the idea is that if black Han is like before, obviously if black plays here, you just cut um, and you're pretty much safe. Like, I guess there's a few things. You could just connect also, it's fine. Um, like this would be kind of a trade and you could just kind of come out, right? You're basically live. It looks kind of funky, but you're actually not that bad because you've basically broken out of, and if black had played the knight's move, black is trying to develop its upper left. Um, and you're connected, and you have an eye. So it's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's overall pretty good. But the idea here is, like, if black plays the same way with the Hanet, you can just cut. And now, you know, if black takes a stone, because of this exchange, you are now connected, which, where you wouldn't be before without this exchange. Without this exchange, black could just cut, and you'd be in kind of trouble. Um, so with this exchange, you're connected. Um, but the main point is, like, by making certain exchanges, like, the idea is kind of like you shorten these liberties a little bit. Not shorten, but you made an exchange that helps your liberty problems later. And maybe it's not really a liberty problem here, it's a connection, but you kind of get the idea. Um, the other example I was going to show, now that I remembered it a bit, and I can't find it in my tree because it got messed up, is uh, in the Kobayashi opening. So like we have this shape. Um, and you probably have seen this many times. So you probably wondered, you know, in this shape, like if white plays here, what if black just cuts, right? What do you do as white? And obviously assume the latter doesn't work for white because that'd be really good. Um, you can actually just play here. It's very similar idea. You're going to squeeze black to make good shape, right? That's the same kind of idea. White's coming into a space, black's coming into a space between white. Anytime that you're trying to take away that eye or cut something off, you have to reduce your own liberties. And so to make good shape, you abuse that fact in order to squeeze it and make good shape. Um, there's a lot of joseki this comes up in, a lot of shapes. But I think that's kind of the main idea I wanted to get take away. I wanted you to take away is like this dynamic between liberties, space, and shape, and kind of squeezing. And so I guess as a last point, uh, many players I'm not going to put up an example, but get confused in making shape in the center. Or I guess I I can put up an example. Um, when you're making shape in the center, I think that's a place where many people. Uh, don't know what to do. So maybe you have a shape like, you know, you have this knight's move. Oh, I'm like, oh, this is very easy. It's actually one of the examples that got erased. Um, like, for instance, this shape was in the AlphaGo game. Uh, one of the AlphaGo self-play games. Um, and White's next move is here. Right? And you might wonder, well, this is kind of a weird move because... It doesn't clearly make an eye, right? Like if we were trying to make a sake shape, I'm sorry about that. A sake ball shape would be here. 
So this is um, kind of strange. But actually, and you might wonder what happens if black peeps. Well, there's kind of two things here. One is white. Anytime white wants, white can make this exchange, right? And then white can actually attach here. And black can push, like, you know, around quite a lot. But it would be, it's actually quite hard to completely kill this shape just because there's so many, um, you know, cutting points. So, like, black can connect. That's great. And white can connect. Black can cut too. And this would be a really uh, difficult fight for both players because obviously, yeah, these stones here are big, um, but the corner gets sealed. So it's kind of tough. Um, you kind of see a similar technique in a very classic shape too, which is when you're reducing a moyo, right? So you're playing white. You want to reduce this moyo. A very common technique is to play this cap and jump. And you wonder, okay, well, what if, you know, black peeps here, just attach. You say, oh, you know what? You want those stones? You can have those stones. Because now you've made good shape in what was black's, you know, sphere of influence. The stone is isolated. This area still can be come into. But the main idea is, again, you set up a, spa a shape that is you know, going to cover a lot of space, right? So like if black plays somewhere else with this, you basically have an eye in this area, or very close to an eye. So like, again, if black comes in here, you actually don't need to do anything, but you could protect and turn, right? So like black wants to not lose the stone. If you connect, then it's pretty easy. <laughs> you just make shape this or like um, this, right? It's, you get the idea. You don't need to cut it and kill it. You need to squeeze the liberties, force it to connect, and make shape by squeezing out the liberties. Uh, you can also, you know, there's lots of shape points here, so it's, I didn't spend a lot of time reading or thinking about this, but, you know, that's kind of the idea. Um, black could peep directly, don't connect, right? Because that's obviously bad for your shape. Um, Black could actually just push you together, and now you have the stick. That's not good. So instead you would come on the outside. Black, you know, doesn't want to cut because you can get all these forcing moves and make good shape, right? Squeeze black, make more, move out to the open area, you know, over here. It's kind of the same thing over and over, so I think you get my point. And at this point you actually don't need to connect because it's kind of small. It depends on what stage of the game it is, but you could just move out, you know, in any direction you want. Okay, well, that about covers what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to put a link to two other videos that I think most people probably know about. Um, one is Dasan's Shape Lecture, and the other was um, True's Shape Lecture, both of which are pretty uh, good for a basis of shape, like thinking about what are the shapes, you know, and how do they interact? Um, and I haven't heard anyone talk about this kind of liberty idea, but I thought maybe that would be uh, useful for people to know. Okay, thanks for watching, and see you all next time.